video we looked at some descriptive statistics for paired data. Now we're going to look at sampling distribution information. This is what ultimately helps us to make our inferences for this type of data. So the mean of the sampling distribution of x bar sub d. Well in the past when we just had x bar at the center or the mean was mu. Now, because we have x bar sub d, the center or the mean is going to be mu sub d. This then is our new parameter of interest. So this is what we'll be trying to make an inference on for the rest of this chapter. So we're trying to make an inference on mu sub d. And then because the center of all of these x bar sub d's is mu sub d, we know that x bar sub d is a good estimate of mu sub d. Then the standard deviation of the sampling distribution uses sigma sub d divided by the square root of n. But the problem with this particular formula is that sigma sub d, remember, is from a population. And we won't know information on the population when we're trying to make inferences. And so we're going to have to switch to a measurement called standard error, where we estimate the value of sigma sub d with s sub d which remember S sub d is our sample standard deviation. So we make that transition because we won't know information on the population, but we will know information on the sample. So this is a good estimate of sigma sub d, or the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. So when we move into our inferences, we're trying to make an inference on mu sub d. So that's our parameter of interest. We know from the sampling distribution that a good sample estimate of mu sub d is x bar sub d. So then we'll add and subtract the margin of error, and our margin of error will be made up of a t star times standard error. So this is our margin of error, so that product will be our margin of error. Remember we use a t star multiplier because we have added estimation, so x bar sub d and s sub d, so that t distribution accounts for the extra sample estimates. And then we're using standard error instead of standard deviation because we won't know the population standard deviation. So this is our formula, and in the next video we will calculate a confidence interval. But one thing that's important for you to remember is that we're extremely interested in the presence or absence of zero. So if the confidence interval includes zero, there's possibly no difference. And if it excludes zero, that indicates that there is possibly a difference. So that paragraph describes it uh, more thoroughly, but essentially that's the idea when you're comparing two groups. Including zero indicates that there's possibly no difference. And if a confidence interval excludes zero, indicates there possibly is a difference between the two measurements.